So, welcome to this lecture on VHDL in the course Digital System Design with PLDs and FPGAs. In the last lecture, we were uh, looking at some examples of uh, given a circuit how to uh, write the code and given a VHDL code how to infer uh, what is the circuit which could be synthesized from that code and so on. And we could not complete that, so I am planning to complete it and get to the digital system design for few lectures before maybe we come back to the VHDL uh, a little bit again go, go to some other topics ok. So, let us have a look at uh, what we have done um, last class, uh, last lecture. Uh, so, last lecture we have looked at the ripple adder. So, in the ripple adder it is simple you know you have a full adder cascaded and the problem is a delay and we said for carry look ahead adder basically um, it is it's like you know writing the truth table and implementing it or working out from the full adder it means that you have this two equation uh, one is for sum one is for carry. The trouble with the ripple adder is that uh, the say C i plus 1 is um, you know kind of derived from A i B i and C i. C i is you know coming of uh, coming out of the, the previous stage. So, it ripples you know it, it, it adds to the delay. So, what the carry look at adder does is that you take this and substitute here from the starting with the C 0 like C 1 is A 0 B 0 or A 0 or B 0 and C 0 uh, and when it comes to, to C 2 it is A 1 B 1 and so on. So, C 1 whatever is a C 1 equation is substituted expanded at a 2 level um, kind of structure. Only difference is that this this is made common you know A i B i and A i or B i because that is used everywhere. So, that is made common. So, there is a another kind of level of uh, gates that is all what uh, it happens. So, you get um, as, as the substitution goes it, it gets expanded you know one product term becomes extra because of this process and you have uh, a you can see that this is G0 P0 add to a level of gates. So, you have 3 levels of gates for the carry and then uh, the, the XOR uh, followed with the XOR. So, you have around uh, kind of 5 gates uh, delay for all the stages you know that is what is achieved by the, the carry look at data and we have implemented um, the, the sum and G i P i in a loop and the carry equations are explicitly written uh, not a big deal because um, even if it is to uh, uh, write a 32 bit it is not a big problem you can write it. And ultimately um, at least in the case of plus most of the time we use the, the plus operator it depends how it is implemented and mostly it will be ripple adder in FPGA it will result in a built in adder resource which we will look at it or later when it, when we come to the, uh, the FPGA part. And we have looked at as an example the shift register and most of you would have learned somehow you, have, you would have coupled this shift with the register, but you should know that there is a register then there is a shift operation. And when you want to shift by kind of uh, say 1 bit then it is a matter of wiring say D 6 go to D 7, D 0 go to D 1 this is D 1, uh, uh, D dash 1 and you append a 0. So, it is just a wiring and destination could be a different register in most practical applications um, it will be a different register you know you uh, I only very less cases where the destination is same as the the source because you have a data path where the data kind of uh, you know goes through a pipeline. So, there is no way you can push it back you know many a time. So, you it goes all the way unless the algorithm itself has an iteration back then you you iterate over the, the data path. Uh, the example will be some kind of encryption schemes where you, you do it iterate it over which can be unfolded, but then uh, that is an easy that is a very costly kind of operation. So, it is iterated over back through the data path and 
uh, but when you need some kind of variable shift say you want a shift register with shift left shift right or you shift by 1 bit shift by 2 bit then you need to have a configurable shift that is achieved by a MUX. So here I am showing a shift left uh, in that case uh, the, the Q6 will get the, the Q5 for shift left and if it is shift right then Q6 will get Q5 and if it is a parallel load it will be coming uh, you know coming from uh, the external input and so on. And there is a select line depending on the number of paths and um, this is replicated. So you have an 8 bit register then you have 8 MUXs and so I said you can you can view it as uh, 8 separate marks or a huge marks it depends how you view it and the coding also can be different depending on that. So the variable shift is done through a multiplexer and we have seen a universal shift register where you have shift left, shift right and a parallel load and that is the code and we have seen uh, we have written a case within the clock even clock is equal to 1. This one shows separate marks as, as as a loop and the second code shows a kind of single muxing. Um, essentially it is same but uh, like I am talking in terms of the hardware now but in terms of the syntax uh, in the VHDL this is kind of loop and this is kind of um, what to say a vector assignment. Uh, otherwise the circuit wise there is no difference uh, there could be difference because it all depends how the synthesis tool kind of infer the structure and how it is mapped to the underlying hardware and all that there could be different for us to try it out. Maybe when we play with the tool we can take some example and have a look at how uh, the synthesis tool handle uh, the various type of coding and so on. So we have seen another example given a block diagram how to, to code um, as I said uh, we can code a register with the preceding uh, logic using a single process and here it looks like there is some logic preceding it and some logic following it. But uh, this being a kind of uh, you know cyclic uh, this can come over here that is what we have done and then you can write a process like uh, clock and reset is there if reset is 1 then z is 0 otherwise upon the clock if lock is 1 then it is q plus a else it is b. So that is what is shown here if reset is 1 q is other 0 upon the clock if loc is 1 then q gets q plus a else q gets b. It is very simple to write uh, the code and this is another example we have got the VHDL code and we kind of worked back uh, to find what is, a, what is a circuit which is implemented by this and from this we could like you have an a is equal to 1 then the output is 0 otherwise upon the b. So a is a reset b is a clock. So this is a comparison y is compared the output is compared with some input and if it is 1 then the data is shifted you know the, the output is shifted version of uh, the present output. The next output is a shifted version of the, the present output and that is it otherwise it will hold the value. So you get uh, a as reset b as a clock then the y is compared with c if it is 1 then a shifted version of the y along with the d goes in here otherwise it is it is kind of recirculated that is hardware you get and this is where we have kind of stopped okay this is another code uh, a VHDL code our aim is to kind of find uh, at least draw the block diagram of the circuit and infer what is the function of the circuit okay. So at the, at the entity level it is very simple you have two inputs which are a 4 bit u and v and a single output um, which is 8 bit okay and there is no clock or reset. So you are sure at least, um, at least I have not shown the code but uh, this being a practical code there is no, no mention of uh, something uh, kind of sounding like clock and reset. So this, this is a combination circuit the, uh, which takes two 4 bit values and give an 8 bit value. Now coming to the architecture before the begin we have some declaration 
a D type 1 it is a new data type which is an array of 4 locations each location is 4 bit and we are declaring a Y of this type ok. Now that means there is a Y3, Y2, Y1, Y0 each of which is 4 bit ok. Now another data type which is again 4 uh, location 8 bit and we have declared X as that type that means you have X3, X2, X1, X0 and we have each of X3, X2, X1, X0 is 8 bit and we have defined a constant uh, that is for easy kind of coding um, maybe for kind of some symmetry we will see in the code uh, which is temp which is a 4 bit vector which is uh, which is all all zeros ok. So, 4 zeros ok. So, we will see the code. So, remember this u and v are the inputs 4 bit w is output 8 bit we have some intermediate signal y which is 4 location 4 y's y3, y2, y1, y0 each of 4 bit x3, x2, x1, x0 each of 8 bit ok. Now, let us uh, go to the code. So, look at this you know there is a generate loop now. As I said u and v are the input and y is a 4 kind of values uh, 4 indexes y3, y2, y1, y0. So, the loop is going from 0 to 3. Now, look at it y of 0 is u and v of 0 replicated 4 times. So, this is kind of aggregating it. So, we know that u is a 4 bit vector which is an input. So, you have u3, u2, u1, u0 which is anded with u3 is anded with v0 u2 is added with uh, v0 and so on. So, all of the, the the 4 bit is kind of masked with v0 ok in the for y0 when it comes to y1 the same u is kind of masked with repetition of v1s y2 is nothing but u and kind of sorry y uh, uh, y3 is u and v3 all v3s and so on ok. So, you get 4 y0, y1, y2, y3 which is nothing but u is masked by this bit ok. So, I am going to show this pictorially you have a 4 bit uh, u vector u3, u2, u1, u0. The first operation is that you take uh, there is a v which is going from v3, v2, v1, v0. So, initially the u is masked with all v0 say v0, 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 v0 that is what is done here and you get y0 which goes from 3, 2, 1, 0. Then next is v1 uh, then it is masking and you get y of 1, 3, 2, 1, 0, v2 then you get y2 and you say v3 then you get y3. So, it is going like this the arrow is going like this 1 by 1 and here the arrow is going like that you know. So, maybe I should have made it um, kind of opposite, but then I hope it is clear v0 make y0, v1, y1, v2, y2, v3, y3 ok. Now, maybe you get an idea what what could be what possibly could be the circuit, uh, but let us wait you know let us look at go ahead see the next part of the code. So, this is a very simple code but this is how uh, the circuit is, uh, is coming up. So, uh, I think keep this in mind let us go to the next part of the code ok. Now, we are now here we form the y's from u and v that is a game and in the second part we are going to make x from y and term and you know that the term is just zeros ok. So, let us look at it. Uh, the x0 which is not in the loop uh, probably which could have been uh, in the loop, but let us let us see uh, x of 0 is tem 3 down to 0 which is nothing but 4 zeros and y of 0 y of 0 is this this 4 bit. So, you have 4 zeros then appended with 
y of 0 ok. Now we get to the loop, loop start with because 0 is already made loop is going from 1 to 3 and you say let us take uh, the first index x of 1 because x of 0 is already there x of 1 which is tem 3 down to i that means 3 down to 1. Here it was 3 down to 0 4 zeros, but here it is 3 zeros. then y 1 now. So, the, the earlier was y 0 was appended now we append the y 1 it is appended with 3 zeros y 1 and tem i minus 1 that is 1 minus 1 tem 0 down to 0 that means 0 only 1 bit. So, you put a 0 here that means 3 zeros y 1 and 1 0 ok. Now, you can guess when it comes to x 2 this become 3 down to 2 that you have 2 zeros y 2 and it is 2 minus 1 1 down to 0 2 zeros. And the next loop when it is x 3 it is 1 kind of you know uh, 3 down to 3 1 0 y and 3 zeros. And in addition you, you see the as the loop goes initially we have 4 0 and y. Now when it comes to x 1 it is 3 0 y and 1 0 plus this is the previous one. So, this two are added when it comes to x 2 whatever those two added is added with the new value and so on. And when you get x 3 x 3 is assigned as w which is the output ok. Now, let us look at that picture. So, we initially put uh, ok now come back to this we had u we had v uh, each of the, the first least significant bit of v0 is mass you get y0 uh, another bit is mass then you get y1 next uh, bit is mass with the u y2 y3. Now you are forming all zeros then put the y0 then you shifted version of y1 is added together then you shifted version of y2 is added to it and shifted version of y3 is added to it and you get w. So, uh, it is it is you are getting the uh, the point. So, you know that it is nothing but shift and add. Uh, so, it is like it is multiplying and if you look at this this is nothing but forming the partial product. So, you have a multiplicand which is 4 bit u3, u2, u1, u0 you have a multiplier which is 4 bit. So, the first partial product is formed by the least significant bit of the multiplier and that with this multiplicand you get the first partial product. Then the v1 is added with this you get the second partial product, v2 is added with this then you get the, the, the third partial product and then v3 is added and you get the, the, the fourth uh, partial product ok. That is what is uh, done here. Um, so, you get four partial products and now when it comes to um, this um, structure it is nothing but partial products are shifted left you know one by one and it is added together. So, it is like you know uh, the partial products are added to get the product ok. So, this though I am showing this adder uh, there is uh, this can be kind of uh, the, the, it is showing three adders um, and parallelly it is added because it is a generate loop. It is not that the same adder is used each time a new adder is used because it is replicated. So, you get a parallel order. So, it is a multiplier, but it is not a kind of iterative multiplier it is a parallel multiplier and the name of this multiplier is called array multiplier because you form an array of the partial product and you add it parallelly. So, it is an array multiplier it is a 4 bit unsigned array multiplier only thing is that normally when you refer to the textbook. Uh, to avoid the rippling something called instead of a ripple adder a carry save adders are used. Uh, here you know that when you add this there is a rippling here then there is a rippling here. It is possible to avoid the rippling kind of uh, because the idea is that uh, say you are adding these two bit it does not matter whether the carry comes here or carry comes here. So, it is possible to put the carry of this stage along with this here. Similarly, carry of this stage can come here the carry of this stage can come here. So, that gives 
a kind of um, to reduce the ripple otherwise it ripples 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 and you know so you will get kind of 4 plus 4 8 rippling it's possible to avoid the rippling using carry safe adders but this is a kind of the idea is not to um, to kind of design the uh, the array multiplier with the carry safe adder it is a practice in uh, kind of working out from the code written uh, uh, you know inferring the circuit which is implemented and as I have shown uh, though the code looks little crazy it is very easily uh, you know you can write and work out the, uh, the, the underlying hardware ok. Uh, so only thing is that it has to be done uh, systematically you have to work on uh, the, the pen and the paper ok. When I say pen and the paper definitely you can write on your tablet or the, the note tool or I do not know when uh, this course is being recorded in November 2013 maybe somebody is watching in 2016 or 17 if at all it is done then I do not know what is the technology maybe whatever may be the technology you can kind of you, you work it out ok. Literally work it out on whatever tool you have um, I would say on a paper pencil then things will be very clear. Uh, there is no uh, kind of ambiguity you know uh, I have uh, taught you what the code means and now it is a matter of patiently working uh, systematically then you will get what is the circuit and in the process you can you can add like uh, suppose somebody has given a code like that you can definitely infer that uh, the ripple adder is being used there is lot of rippling maybe we can replace this ripple adder with the carry save adder and make things faster. Uh, the, the critical path delay can be reduced and so on. So that is a advantage of uh, kind of uh, working the hardware uh, from the VHDL code. So that should be kept in mind. So let us move ahead one more example um, uh, that has to be uh, let, let us look at this example. So I want you uh, I want to design a synchronous 4 bit up down counter with the parallel load feature ok. That means it is a uh, synchronous counter 4 bit it should count up when the direction is 1 down when the direction is 0 and there is a load signal and 4 bit input when the load is 1 it should load the counter with uh, the, the input value and depending on the direction when the load goes low depending on the direction it should go up or uh, down ok and we will walk first we will do is that we will write the, the block schematic then we will write the behavioral code you know step systematically from this block schematic which is kind of drawn. So you know that the 4 bit counter needs um, uh, a 4 flip flops you have the clock and reset ok. So, uh, like when the reset comes the count is 0 and when the clock comes the game, game starts. The first thing is that you know that in a parallel load counter we need to have the priority for the, the load. So we will put a max here ok to the D and the select line is load and when that is 1 we supply the input ok. If it is 0 then we have to put the count part ok. So, let us put that when so we put a 2 to 1 max at the input because that is the highest priority and we have seen that the highest priority will come near to the D ok near to the D because that is the one which gets a effect uh, first. So, when the load is 1 this D in gets loaded into the to the D if it is 0 now the direction comes now we have 2 things to do if there is a direction is 1 then it up counts direction is 0 it down counts. So what we do is that we put a 2 to 1 max here the select line is the direction if direction is 1 then what we do we have to increment this because it is Q. So you take this Q back put a plus 1 to the to the 1 input of max similarly if direction is 0 then Q has to be decremented. So, Q is put through a minus 1 and put to the max ok. So, let us put that. So, we have a 2 to 1 max there is a direction 
signal if it is 1 q is taken uh, back to as input then we have a plus 1 which goes to the mux and if it is 0 q is going through a minus 1 it goes to uh, to the 0 and it goes there okay. So now that is simple you have, we have 4 flip flops reset clock which is common we have the highest priority load which goes to the first 2 to 1 marks and and load is 1 this goes there load is 0 depending on the direction now direction is 1 then q is q plus 1 else q is q minus 1 okay and that simple now actually uh, uh, like the the design is over uh, now if you if you look at this you know that uh, this entity has say reset as input single bit clock as input single bit load as input single bit direction is input single bit uh, dns an input which is standard logic vector 3 down to 0 because 4 bit then we have a count which is output which is 3 down to 0 4 bit that then we this structure shows that count is also input to it and we know that the vhdl does not allow. So we declare an internal signal called q and then we use q as the uh, as in the in the in to write the code and in the architecture statement region we assign this q to the to the count okay. Now if you look at the vhdl code a symbol process clock and reset if reset is 1 q gets other 0 else if clock even clock is equal to 1 under that if load is 1 q gets d in else else if direction is 1 q gets q plus 1 else q gets q minus 1 end if sorry ah yes end if that is it. So that is the whole code the moment you see this the code is there is no, no need to write the code you know it is a mechanical process. So um, uh, it is it is possible uh, uh, to generate the code if you if you want you know somebody draw a block schematic it is possible to generate the VHDL code out of the block schematic okay it is for a computer science student it is very easy you know from this kind of structure to generate a VHDL code it is very straightforward like you have a tool to draw like the moment you put the draw like you are only allowing the designer to draw so you know what is happening and you keep keep you know adding uh, the template you have a template code then you can keep you know generating the VHDL code it is very easy. So let us look at um, uh, the kind of uh, the code you have the library and uh, we have standard logic 1164 then standard logic unsigned because we are going to use a plus as I said clock reset load direction is 1 bit DIN is 4 bit input count is 4 bit output then the Q is uh, the same as count which is signal 4 bit count gets Q then we start the begin okay in the begin count gets Q then you write process clock reset begin if reset is 1 Q gets other 0 else if clock even clock is equal to 1 then under, underneath all that is coming behind and this has highest priority next this has a priority. So if load is 1 then q gets d in else if direction is 1 then q gets q plus 1 else q gets q minus 1 end if okay. So and this end if and this is the memory end if this is the, the combination circuit if this represent the combination circuit with kind of priority and this represent the, the memory end if because there is no else and end process and the architecture. So that is very simple and that is how you should write the code um, very straightforward there is nothing to worry but um, if somebody say uh, like you give this spec and you start like that straight away without any any clue whatsoever about the circuit and most people try to do that you know they kind of some vague idea and you know start assigning things and things can go wrong because uh, you will be wondering you know something goes wrong then you will be playing with the if you say okay let us say instead of uh, putting the if uh, else here you put something else write another nested if and so on because you have no clue on what is the circuit and you will waste a lot of energy in going but if you know 
uh, as we have learned uh, you know what is the meaning of this syntax as far as uh, the circuit is there concerned then it is very easy very 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 easy to write after a practice these kind of structure will be in your mind you, you do not need to kind of expand it you can just show us a block with the load direction and some way to indicate which is which has kind of priority over the other and things like that some kind of notation you can use then straight away you can code it it is very easy. So I think um, it is a some kind of um, logical place to stop for a while because we have taken quite a lot of uh, VHDL uh, but that is to put you in a strong footing uh, so that when we go to the tool uh, take a case study try to implement you are kind of thorough. Uh, so in this class we have looked at uh, the, the carry look at data co uh, the VHDL code then we have seen um, basically uh, the ripple adder, carry look at adder, adder then some uh, you know examples of um, some random circuit how to code it. Then basically we have looked at the code of an array multiplier and worked out uh, the underlying circuit and, and without even bothering uh, about what is the functionality. Of course um, you are writing in uh, kind of exam and you have such a, a kind of um, question then you are you are kind of finding uh, like a, you know you have a shortage of time then definitely you can guess and jump to conclusion but when you are doing the serious design in a design team you should not do that you should do as I kind of uh, as I have shown but when you are uh, with the serious design you should not guess anything uh, you should work it out and info what is going on. And the last thing we have look, looked at is that given the spec of a counter how to draw the block diagram and how to write the VHDL code uh, as a one to one you know what is shown in the block diagram is a code written you give it to any synthesis tool it is going to generate the same circuit you know maybe it is mapped to uh, some inbuilt block as a single unit or multiple unit it does not matter but then we are not sure maybe the, the multiplexer in there is implemented using some special resources within an FPGA. But that apart from that you know apart from the technology the, the block schematic which is generated by the synthesis tool will be exactly same as what, what you wanted you know what you have drawn on the paper uh, or what you have written the code you are, you are 100 percent sure about that. So that is a kind of uh, uh, thing I want you to do as a designer. And do not think that anything complex will have uh, you know much more difficult than this because ultimately we have seen that you know you have a complex circuit then we are going to break it down hierarchically as a data path then controller then we are going to data path itself is going to be broken down to this, this level of detail and then you can write the code in a very 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 straightforward way you do not have to. Uh, kind of uh, you do not have to be very happy that um, you, you get a C code to VHDL compiler you can do that if you are in a short of time or a, a software engineer is trying to do the hardware design and so on. But I do not see any big, big point uh, in doing that definitely the, the tools will improve as we go along the standard but still it will be kind of. Uh, template base it cannot be kind of artificial intelligence and things like that machine learning and things like that but uh, maybe it will come like that but uh, at least for the time being uh, it is kind of you know there is underlying templates you map uh, the you infer the structure architecture and try to map it to the standard structures and so on. So let us stop um, this uh, the VHDL part here. And let us for at least two lectures uh, let us get back to the, the digital design so that we can continue maybe with the, the VHDL little more uh, we will go hand in hand. So let us move on. So uh, let us come back to the digital system design part. Now very quickly I want you to run through the, the last thing we have done hopefully I am able to, to kind of I am putting the thing correctly. So the last thing we have discussed in digital design was a uh, case study if you have not familiar 
uh, kind of if you have if you have forgotten or if you have not taken that part of the uh, looked at that part of the lecture go back and look at it okay. So uh, what we have done was to we have an ADC what we have tried normally ADC is kind of interface to a host CPU or a microcontroller or a processor what we are trying to do is that to kind of take the load off the processor by having a controller uh, controlling the ADC and putting the data to a temporary storage and when it is kind of full the host will read it that was the idea and we found that the best uh, candidate for this is FIFO because um, uh, the, the you know the you write the data in order you read the data in order uh, there is no and it is a one way data flow so you put the FIFO so you get uh, you put a controller controller gives the start of conversion end of conversion comes to the controller in addition controller has a clock and reset it gives the FIFO write and when this becomes full kind it, it interrupts the host and host will read it and host give a start for you know controlling the whole operation when it is start is 1 it keeps on doing it and when it is 0 it stops and this is the data path FIFO and we are at least in this case we have assumed FIFO is there already and we have looked at the controller and first thing we have made some assumptions you know that it is and we have drawn a timing diagram we wait for the start when the start comes give a SOC wait for an end of conversion give a write signal then we said that this is a can be a narrow pulse uh, in one state you can give an output but this should be of some width and we need to generate that time properly. So we decided to put a counter as, as a subsystem which is controlled the reset of which is controlled by the same controller or state machine and when it is equal to, it is decoded for a particular value then gives a time. So the idea is that when it when uh, the, the FIFO write is given the reset is removed and it starts counting and you wait for this time when it reaches that pulse get that pulse then you put back the reset and the terminate the FIFO. So we have updated the timing diagram added this when you put this low the reset is removed wait for this and from this we have worked out an algorithm like you know wait for the start give start of conversion wait of end of conversion give FIFO right remove the reset wait of wait for the signal and terminate everything go back to the, the same thing okay. And that was the control algorithm and we have written a state diagram and the exactly similar thing and so there are inputs transition states and the output and we have decided to use D flip flop for state binary encoding so 0, 0, 0, 0001 0, 1, 1. and from this um, state the, the input transition you can work out the next state table state output you can work out the output table. So we have done that you have uh, this is the controller we have basically uh, the, the state variables or the flip flops which gives a present state in our case two flip flop and that along with the input decode the next state and upon the clock next state is loaded and in each state the present state the output is decoded from the present state as a function of the present state or as a function of input and the present state. If it is only the function of present state is more if it is a function of present state and input then it is melee and we have written as I said from the input and the present state and the transition this table then you get an equation for D1 and D0 in terms of the present state and the input then you can you know minimize implement it similarly for the output you from uh, you write the output in terms of the present state and you get output as a function of present state you form the equation and minimize it and that is the whole methodology and, and basically up to the, the state diagram is what uh, uh, the designer has to put effort then the tools come into picture in all minimization and ultimately to test and debug you use uh, some kind of equipment and and the designers uh, involvement is there here designer gives some kind of inputs and that is what we have done you know we have seen uh, the whole process of designing uh, of course the data path has to be designed 
So, let us uh, now take uh, some issues in the, in the state machine itself the controller. The first thing is that we know that we have happily put uh, like when we discuss the state diagram uh, you see here uh, okay the state diagram is here. So, we have shown upon the reset that means at the beginning when the power on reset come it should start with S0 okay. Uh, it can be 0 0 it can be any state it need not be um, 0 0 but it can be any state. Uh, but the, the, the game is that this reset has to be implemented you should not forget that you know that is very dangerous you work out everything but you forget to implement reset in state machine then you power on it can come anywhere okay and uh, it is very dangerous luckily we have only uh, 4 states and 2 flip flops. But assume that we have uh, say 6 states then we need to use um, 3 flip flops and there are 8 states there will be some unused state and by you power it on without a reset and if it goes to some unused state we do not even know what is the behavior of the, the state machine very dangerous. So, it has to be properly reset so that is what we are going to see that. So, let us look at that okay this is the, the state machine we have the, uh, the flip flops present state next state logic and the output logic. So, very very simple if you have reset asynchronous reset in the flip flop just use the connect the power on reset to that and at the power on it will become it will come to the starting state One it, once it comes to the starting state then you have the control you know you are the one who is designing the, the state machine and you can at the end of the iteration you can bring it back to the uh, whatever state you require you need not come back to the, the starting state depending on the application it can go to uh, some other state and then wait for some input. But um, you have to at the beginning at the power on you have to bring it to a starting state and that is where it is used and um, and this is uh, like in VHDL coding uh, this is simple because this is combined with the, the flip flop okay. So, you can treat this as a, a kind of process for a flip flop then this reset is implemented along with that flip flop uh, you know as the asynchronous reset of the flip flop. Suppose uh, take the case where uh, the, the flip flops in the technology whatever the technology use be it a ASIC or an FPGA assume that uh, this reset is not available then you and there is suppose there is no reset at all uh, in the flip flop. Then what we have to do is that we have to introduce a synchronous reset as the name suggests it is something to do with the D. So, it is very simple uh, you add an add an input reset here okay and uh, change the next state logic and we have seen the truth table can be changed or we are going to write the VHDL code. So, in this somewhere we are going to say if reset is 1 then uh, this next state is the starting state then that is done okay. Uh, so, if this is not available then use a synchronous reset but not both you know. So, I have removed that and uh, if use synchronous reset if not available uh, sorry use asynchronous reset if it is not available use a synchronous uh, reset. So, that is done and uh, from uh, the, the experience what we have with the kind of uh, data path design uh, a clever student can already infer what could be the circuit in terms of you know we have we have shown for a counter with the load signal uh, this reset as the priority like say there is input there is present state but definitely we know that synchronous reset as the priority. So, if you look at it uh, it is equivalent to kind of putting a mux here okay and the reset is the select line and when the reset is 1 a 0 goes there otherwise this next state logic comes here. So, like if you write a code for synchronous reset and give it to the synthesis tool that is going to happen at the output of previously written code 
previously generated circuit you are going to have a 2 to 1 mux where the select line is reset and you get a 0 ok that is what that is what is happening. So, I am kind of reinforcing what we have learned probably I could have shown the picture but uh, you know it, it takes a lot of effort to draw these pictures and put it I have already invested a lot of energy. So, but I think you can kind of imagine what is what is uh, basic idea here. So, that is about the, the power on reset and when it comes to the VHDL we will go back to the VHDL coding of the state machine though it is nothing kind of simple I mean nothing great because we know how to code uh, flip flops or registers we know how to code the combination circuit because this is a combination circuit this is a combination circuit uh, you could we have seen that you could combine the output logic with the next state logic. But after all it is combination circuit and we know how to code the combination circuit. So, but yet um, we will see that uh, because uh, the controller is one important part and we will see how to properly code it and um, it is also it is, there are different ways of coding it. But it is very specific to maybe the tool there may be 6 different ways of coding it but your tool may not understand um, uh, everything uh, then there is a problem. So, we will see that we will go back to the to the coding of the VHDL uh, let us look at the next topic ok. Now, in this uh, very conveniently we have shown a clock ok and that is what all the textbook uh, do kind of uh, they show a clock ok and say the clock is there. But what should be this clock ok. So, what should be the frequency of the clock that is the, the question ok. Uh, many a times it is not addressed and um, you are kind of most of the time when you are in an academic uh, you are answering some uh, kind of uh, most of the time some exam where it is enough that uh, a line is drawn and you write the clock ok. So, you are you are saved by that, but in real life you have to give a clock ok and uh, so we have to decide what should be the clock ok. So, definitely uh, you must be getting some kind of idea saying that this probably can suffer or uh, tolerate a range of frequencies ok. Let us assume uh, let us try to find out what could be the maximum clock we can apply to this ok and what could be the minimum clock ok. So, let us look at the maximum clock and let us look at the minimum clock ok. So, the maximum clock you must be already getting the idea it has something to do with the delay of this logic delay of the flip flop and delay of this logic and we have already seen uh, the, the maximum frequency of the state machine which is nothing but uh, the maximum frequency of a data path or a register to register path. This is a sequential circuit, but you have a data path as a pipeline it is all same you know you have some registers some flip flop its output is going through a combination logic and is going to some other flip flop. In this case if you have q1 and q0 q1 output may go through some circuit go to to d1 or or uh, d0 and so on ok. So, there could be 4 paths you know q1 q0 d1 d0 2 by 2 you have 4 paths. So, uh, you know that if you consider that the clock comes there is a TCQ delay there is a delay through the combination circuit and that data has to be here set up time before. So, the clock period should be greater than TCQ max T comp max plus T setup max ok. And we have also with the incomplete information we have this given a clock the output is kind of appear here after TCQ and T output logic. So, whichever is greater whichever this is greater or this is greater we choose definitely if it goes through some other combination circuit to a register we have to consider all that. And that is what um, when you really design the tool is going to look at the whole path you know it, it, this is just a picture, but ultimately when you design this is going through a register output logic some combination logic and ultimately it is going to uh, a register and the the tool is going to analyze that you know that you should keep in mind. So, let us put the maximum frequency um, ok. So, we have a maximum clock frequency which depends on delay of the clock, clocks 
maximum clock frequency or the minimum clock period uh, is T clock min should be greater than max of TCQ max plus TNSL max plus T setup max or TCQ max plus TOL max and there could be kind of some more terms here but uh, kind of with the with the information we have we are putting I am putting this you know you can add that but suppose um, you have designed a state machine and you find the maximum frequency is say 1 gigahertz this uh, kind of this can tolerate and uh, is it a good idea to clock it at 1 gigahertz. Maybe uh, the system which is controlling which is the data path which is controlled by say uh, we have some data path which is uh, uh, which the state machine controls. Suppose that is working at say 100 megahertz what is the point you know that is dissipating so less power but this is furiously clocking at 1 gigahertz dissipating lot of power because it is switching. So uh, there is no advantage in working at the maximum frequency uh, we have to see how much minimum we can go because in terms of the power dissipation that is the best thing to do like without uh, like after all the state machine alone cannot do anything as long as it allows uh, the data path to proceed at the desired uh, throughput okay desired frequency then we should choose a frequency of the clock for the state machine such that the data path works properly at the desired uh, it should give the desired performance then we can minimize power in the, the state machine. So let us think uh, let us ask this question what should be the minimum frequency okay that is uh, the great uh, that is the right question to ask. So maybe I think you should think uh, what what is the what should uh, the minimum frequency depend on okay. So that is a question to ask um, the answer is maybe I will put uh, something we are you know basically controlling a data path. So these inputs are coming from the data path some output and this outputs are going to the data path input and what we are trying to do is that we are trying to look at various input step through various sequences and control that data path okay. So essentially it has got something to do with this input and something to do with the output because that is where uh, the game is okay. There is nothing extra because there is a clock there is a reset everything else is coming from the data path. So it must got something to do with the input something to do with probably something to do with the output okay. So let us ask this question okay. So what should be the, the minimum clock frequency okay. Now to illustrate I will kind of put some inputs and let us see that okay. So assume that we have 3 input to our state machine okay. That means we are looking at this say these inputs are 3 inputs from the data path. Uh, it is some output of data path in 1, in 2, in 3 okay. And to make our life easy we are assuming they are all kind of uh, you know square waves okay which is which is not true in real life uh, you do not get anything like this. May, you, you may not even find uh, a, a, a scenario where a very rare scenario where everything is kind of square wave but let us put this okay. So that is where so I am trying to put a clock you know the best thing is that when you try to analyze something um, then you should put some simplest case simple assumption. Suppose in maths you are trying to do something say uh, a kind of matrix uh, multiplication uh, with uh, which is a 10 by 10 and you are trying to understand something maybe you are trying to understand uh, something about uh, eigen values and eigen vectors and so on. So it is very easy suppose you put a 5 by 5 matrix and trying to work out you will not get any kind of intuitive idea but the moment maybe you take a, a simple case of 2 by 2 uh, matrix, matrix and a, a, a kind of a 2 by 1 vector and you try to infer uh, these you know draw 
a kind of a graph uh, draw a picture then you will get some intuitive idea. So every time when you try to, to kind of understand some fundamental you put simple thing you know you do not make very complicated. So let that is why I put a very simple picture which is not real life then once you get the basic idea then we can bring it to the to the next level of reality we can bring back to the reality close to real life. So what I am showing is that that I have shown 3 um, inputs and uh, you know that this in 3 is a uh, some frequency maybe 100 megahertz in 2 is 50 megahertz and in 1 is 25 megahertz ok. So now I put a clock ok to see uh, like uh, we have to see what is the minimum kind of frequency. So I just put a clock ok of course I have worked it, worked it out I have manipulated it uh, for you to understand. But look at this ok the and this is working on the positive clock edge ok like that and you see that uh, when this clock comes say in 1 is 0 the next clock 1 in 1 has changed no problem it is detected within a clock period again it is still 1 no problem it has gone to 0 that is detected you take the in 2 uh, when the clock came in 2 was high it is detected then it went low uh, then this is detected and this change is detected. But you take a look at this in 3 and uh, you see that the clock edge comes and that is sample and this is 1 and there is a transition to 0 it comes back to 1 but when the next clock comes it is still 1 it is still 1 it is still 1. That means there are some changes in one of the input but since we have chosen a particular clock frequency this is not detected at all. So this shows that this clock frequency is not going to work maybe this is too low a clock period ok. But suppose I put a clock clock like this say now there is a positive clock edge yes it is detecting that it is 0 and when the next positive edge it is detecting that it is 1 next positive edge it is detecting that 0. So it shows that the, the clock frequency of the state machine has got something to do with uh, the input uh, changes ok. So definitely we know that there is a change here. So if a clock has to come the clock period has to come within this this thing. So we can say as, as I as I to start with I make a statement saying that the, the clock frequency should be twice that of the maximum clock frequency ok. So um, we are coming to probably the end of the, uh, the lecture today's lecture I will continue I will complete this portion. So we looked at two part one is the reset use async reset or sync reset and the maximum clock frequency depends on the delay of the blocks minimum clock frequency has got something to do with the rate of change of the input. Uh, to the state machine which is output of the data path. So uh, please go through whatever we have covered in this lecture, uh, revise it, learn well and I wish you all the best and thank you.